Hey, I'm Marie, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to rapidly create batches of tasks inside of your project templates so that anytime you create a new project, you can add a batch of tasks to your master task database at the same time. An example of this is if you create YouTube videos, there's probably a dozen different tasks that you do every single time more or less the same. And so we want to be able to rapidly create those. Every time you create a new project or new video, those tasks are automatically added to your task database without you having to do a lot of legwork. So I'm going to show you how this works. Let's jump into the demo. Now we're using video as an example here, but this would totally apply to web design projects or branding projects. It doesn't really matter. All that matters is that you have a project that you approach and you have the same tasks that you need to do every time. What I have here is a video project database and my master task database. This isn't my actual task database. If it was, there'd be a lot more tasks in here. But what I've done is included a couple of tasks in here so that you can see, for example, if I have personal tasks like water the plants, clean the house, they're here in this same database. Obviously, you'd want to pull your own master task database into here. If you already have one and you want to pull this into a dashboard, you can type in slash, start typing create linked database and pull in your particular master task database. If you don't know what I'm talking about when I say master task database, definitely go check out this other video I created. I'll link it down below that walks you through how to create a master task database from scratch and explains why we want to do it this way. You've got your video project ideas up here and we want to create a template so that you're not having to create the same tasks over and over again, like script the video, record it, upload the thumbnails, etc. So there's no tasks right now associated with this video, but you'll notice here I have created a relation between the task database and the video database. For the purposes of this video, you'll want to make sure that you do have a bit of an understanding of how relational databases work inside of Notion because we are connecting up our video database to our master task database so that whenever you create a new video, you can rapidly create the tasks that are connected up to that video and you can filter your views that way too. So if you only want to see the tasks that are related to a specific video, you can filter your views in different ways. Let's say, for example, we're going to use setting up my tower garden as the example. I have a template here called new video idea. I'm going to apply this template to this entry so you can see what I've done. And then we're going to recreate it. And you'll see just by clicking that template button, it's generated five tasks and it has embedded the master task database inside of this video. There's a filter here that says video contains setting up my tower garden. And just by clicking on that template, what it does is it automatically creates that the master task database and that video are now connected. And that means if I drag anything into here, it's going to inherit the filters. So you see the filter is video setting up my tower garden. And if I click on this, you'll see it's automatically created a connection to that video. I'm going to go back there. So now I can see that task is created. So if I drag any of these tasks into the calendar, those are going to pop up here and those two are going to be connected. And so what I can do is drag these around. Maybe I want to write the script here. Maybe I want these two to happen on Friday. And maybe these are going to happen on or Saturday rather and then Sunday. So now I have assigned all of those tasks to this video inside of this calendar. It's already pre-filtered. And if you want, you can Create a view for yourself so that you can see all of your tasks as well. And that way you can visualize what days you actually want to get them done because you can move them around based on what other tasks you have on your schedule. So I've applied the template and then I've moved those tasks into the calendar. So that's the basic version of what I'm talking about here. That's one way to do it is to embed your master task database inside of your template and connect the two. I will show you how to do that. Let's create a new template here another video template. And what we'll do is again, create your list of tasks here. And then we want to pull in your master task database here. So easiest way to do that is to go find your master task database, click on copy link, go back to your template, edit it, and paste your database here, create linked database. And it always defaults to a table view, which is not always the most helpful view. So I like to choose the calendar and drag that to the top if you want that to be your default view. Notions templates will always default to whichever one is at the top of the list. So let's say we prefer that calendar view. Then we want to add this filter. So again, because this is a master task database, you can see all of those tasks that have been created, cleaning the house, watering the plants. 
I don't really need to see those. I just want to see what's connected up to my video project. So we need to create a filter here. And I'm still editing a template here. I'm not editing an individual entry. So I'm going to filter this to the current template. So this is named another video template. The filter should say another video template. And what this means is if I create a new video using this template, it's going to rename that filter and those two are already going to be connected up. And let's give this a, an emoji just so you can visually distinguish that. So you'll notice here that's got an emoji, right? Those two are inherently connected now. So that's a pretty similar template to the one that I had called new video idea. And I can also automatically have it so that this assigns to me and that status is editing, right? I can choose whatever those properties are that I want it to automatically have when I create this new project. So we've already set up a template for setting up my tower garden. That one's good to go. But let's say how to care for houseplants doesn't yet have a template applied to it. I can click another video template. It's going to apply that peach emoji, bring in the master task database and bring in the bullets that go along with this project. Now, again, I can drag these in here and that's going to automatically connect those up because this is filtered here. And you'll see those appear right here as well. I'm going to undo that, Command-Z. So let's say when I drag these into the master task database, I want them to also have other properties too. What I can do is pre-populate those properties into this filter here. So let's say anytime I drag something in, I want to make sure I'm automatically assigning it to me. And maybe I also want to give it a, a status or I want to make sure that they're not complete. And maybe I want to make sure to give them a tag of business. So now anytime I drag those into the master task database, they're going to have all of those criteria. So let's drag those in again so you can see what I'm talking about. You can see they appear right here. And let's open up one of these assigned to me tagged with business and associated with that video. Let's say I want to retroactively apply a template to an item where I've added some notes, but I want to apply one of my different templates to it. I can select everything, hit delete, and just select whichever template I want to use. New video idea. And that's going to pull in all of those properties. All right, so the filter is how to prune your roses. Since there's no task associated with it yet, it's not there in the calendar, but I can go apply all of these here and drag them around, open that up, and you'll see they're associated with that video. Excellent. That's one way of doing it. The other way you could do this is with a template button. So let's go back into our new video idea, and I'm going to pull those tasks here just to use as our example. All right, so we've got this batch of tasks, and again, anytime we create a new project, we want all of those tasks to be rapidly created. Another way you can do this is to create a template button. So start typing slash template button. That generates a new template button here. If you've never used that before, you can rename it here and say add new video tasks. And you'll see that there's a, a blank to do here. What I'm going to do is drag all of these inside of this here. I'm going to delete that final to do. And if I close that, you'll see now I've got this new add new video tasks button. If I click on that, it's going to generate all of those tasks that were inside it. If I click it again, it's going to generate a new batch and a new batch. Um, if you want to edit this, you can click back on the configure template on the right hand side. And you can turn these into pages. You can have any number of things that you want to do here. Now, let's say I want to give these emojis so that every single time I create film the video, it's got a little video emoji. And when I'm talking about writing the script, it's got a little pencil emoji. We can do this rapidly so that you don't have to keep adding your emojis and keep adding your properties every single time you create these tasks. Now, I find one of the easiest ways to add properties to these is I'm going to actually bring them into the master task database. Doesn't really matter what date you drag them on. Let's open up film the video. I'm going to give that an icon. Let's do the video icon here. Let's say I'm the one that always handles that. I can assign that to myself and let's say, let's give it a business a template. Great. Generate thumbnails. Let's say that one's going to be that business assigned to me. 
and I'm going to go through and apply all of the emojis that I want to appear on those. Great, all of these have emojis now. They get assigned to me automatically when I create them. They've got a couple different properties. So now what I can do is drag each of these back into this template block. So they look like new pages, essentially. And one thing that I recommend doing is to add a blank block at the top of this list. Because what happens is when you generate items with a template button, it automatically tries to open whatever the first one is. And because that's a page, it's going to open up that page and you don't want that to happen. So let's add a blank block at the top here and close this. Great. So now when I'm ready to add a set of video tasks to a particular video, let's go to current video. So what I mean here is we can choose which video we want to apply these tasks to. Let's say, let's make a brand new video. Let's say fancy new video. So that's just in idea stage. And let's say we're not going to apply a template to it. We're going to use this new method. What I'm going to do is filter this to whichever video I want to apply. Fancy new video. It has no tasks assigned to it currently. Now I'm going to use this template button to generate all the tasks that I want to associate with this fancy new video. It's created this list for me. So let's say I want to drag these three onto this date here. And I want to drag these two onto Saturday. If I open up any of these, you'll see it's got the emoji. It's associated with the video. It's got a tag. It's got my name. So every single time I want to switch up this video, I can just say, switch up the video, how to care for plants. Okay, let's create a bunch of new tasks. Let's drag them all in wherever you want them to be. Drag them around, how to care for plants, generate thumbnails. So I can continue to switch up the video, change the filter, drag the new tasks in, drag the new tasks in. And you can do this on any dashboard too. This doesn't have to only be in your video dashboard. If you have a headquarters that you always work from, you can create these template buttons wherever you need them. In fact, you can duplicate them right, and drag them into other pages that you want them to appear. So you can keep reusing that. But I find adding the properties that you want and the emojis and everything from inside a database, then dragging them out into your template buttons allows it all those properties actually get stored. So even though they get turned into pages here, and if I click on film the video, there's no metadata in there, but all the metadata that I've associated with it here the tag, my name, etc. It gets re-inherited as soon as you generate those tasks and pull them into your database. So that's two different ways you can do this work from within the template here or within a template button. Generate those tasks, rapidly add them into your calendar. This is just a really stripped down example of how to think about this. Now you can also add these tasks right into your video projects as well. So let's say for example, best garden tools to use. I already applied a template to that, but there's no tasks here. What I can do is generate these new tasks, select them all, drag them into here, open that up. They're all here. And I'm just going to drag them right into the calendar. And it's already connected up to the video itself because of that filter, because the filter was already connected. Anything that you drag into that view is going to inherit those filters. And then I can drag this around. Again, as long as your master task database is inside of the video entry, it almost doesn't matter which one you decide to do it. You can decide which workflow makes sense for you. Sometimes I think people find it a little tricky to get to edit these templates here and, and it can be a little bit confusing. So consider using a template button to help you generate tasks quickly. So you don't have to keep doing that, opening up every single entry and adding those tasks. So there isn't one way to create a new project and automatically have those tasks assigned, but you can create a new project template with all of those tasks ready to be assigned, and then you can drag them in as needed. I hope that's been helpful. I use this method with all of my projects. I have all of the ready to go items sitting above my master task database. So my projects are always a dashboard that have my master task database inside of it. And anything related to that project that I do over and over again, is just going to live right above that database. And I can drag those items right into the database to rapidly assign them and get projects moving faster. 
Now let's just add another layer of complexity in that you might want to do a better job tracking which of these videos have all of their tasks complete. You know that I've got a relation here between this video and my task database. What I'm going to do now is pull in a completion property. And this is going to be a roll up so I can test and look at which of these tasks are actually complete. So I'm going to choose the relation of tasks and I'm choosing the done property. And so there's a couple different ways you can do this. You can show original, which is what I'm going to do. And just to show you what this looks like, let's mark a couple as done just so you can see. Cool. So I marked a few of those as complete. Now up here, let's turn on those properties so we can actually see that completion rate. So how to care for plants has a number of tasks with a done property. So those are showing up here. So I can see I've only done, you know, three of the required tasks here, which can be helpful. So what we can start to do is filter this then to say the completion has no completion, has everything is checked or everything is blank. So we can start to filter this in, in a bit of an interesting way to say, only show me everything, videos that kind of still have items left to do, right? Anything that's got an empty checkbox, I wanna see it. And so let's say the fancy new video, let's turn on these tasks too, so you can see what we're talking about here. So I can see these are all of the film the video, generate thumbnails, etc. So with this roll up too, I can show how many are checked, how many are unchecked, what the percentage unchecked is, or I can show the original. If I show the original, it's going to show the actual checkboxes of those tasks. If I show, for example, unchecked, then I know that there's six tasks left to do for that. So that's one way of doing this here in the properties. I can hide the specific tasks, but I can say, show me how many tasks are left undone. So I know there's five tasks here that have not been done. If I go to film the video, the one that's associated with fancy new video, I'm going to click on that here, actually film the video. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to mark it as complete. And you'll notice that automatically changed to four. So that's one way that you can visually see how many tasks with each of those projects are actually complete. And again, I can adjust this filter to say only show me things where completion is not empty or is empty or is 100%. Or maybe I want to do something like completion is greater to or equal than one. And that way, this is going to show me anything that has any incomplete elements. If we go to our fancy new video tasks, and what I'm going to do is show it here in the calendar view. So if the current video, let's say fancy new video, I'm going to mark all of these as done. Quick way to do that. Turn on these done properties here. All right. So let's say done. I can mark all of these as complete. And if I look up here, I can see there's one and this is going to filter to say, anything where completion is uh, greater than or equal to one. So if I check this off, that disappears, All right? So that's one way to keep track of which videos have incomplete activities just based on the completion rate of the related tasks. Then you can take this to another level if you want with formulas to count up the number of incomplete tasks, give it an emoji, a property, yell a message at you. Hey, there's still work to be done here. So as you can see, you have a lot of flexibility in how you set this up, what data you track, how you track it. It's really up to you. All that matters is that you are designing it in a way that makes sense for your brain. Now, this is a pretty basic example in terms of the layout and the setup. I have a much more complex dashboard where I've got some metrics tracking and idea generation and all sorts of things. But this is just to show you a quick example of how to connect up your projects and your tasks rapidly to assign those tasks. Don't hesitate to have some fun with it. And I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching.